Hey, Jeremy, give us just a second. All right, now we're working. Hey, sorry about that. Hey, no problem. We've had a, a little bit of difficulty with Zoom the last couple of days. But yeah, I have, I have not used the uh, webinar feature before. Oh, yeah. It's a little, a little funky to get used to. Hey, so it looks like uh, we have somebody showed up. Hey, Jeremy, how are you doing? Here, I'll let Jeremy talk if he wants to. He is our one and only today so far. Yeah, so Jeremy, I'm I'm here today to just answer any questions you might have. Uh, if you have any outstanding support tickets or if there was anything that you were working on that I could uh, possibly lend a hand on.
Hey, so it seems like uh, we have somebody else that's joined. Um, uh, so I'm I'm Andrew. I'm from Support. Um, so Tyson has joined as well. Um, I'm Andrew. I'm from Support, um, and today I'm here just to answer any uh, outstanding questions you guys might have, or if you have any projects you're working on, uh, maybe I'll be able to answer some of the questions uh, that you may have working on them. Hey, I see uh, Tyson raised his hand. Yeah, uh, my name is actually Eric, but I work with Tyson. Uh, oh, okay. I did just have, I had a question about, um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access an external API and it requires an API key. And I'm just trying to do that through a REST service. And I'm just getting a 401 unauthorized because I'm not seeing an option to send in the API key. And I've tried sending it in, sending it in as a header, but that isn't, that doesn't seem to be working. Okay. So and um, you... what is the uh, header? Uh, what is the header key value that you're sending it in as? Uh, I'm just sending it in as a, a constant variable as a string. Okay, um, and what what uh, version of decisions are you using right now? Eight. Eight. All right. Yeah. So, I think. Um, do you by chance have a support ticket in for this? I believe I saw some conversation uh, about a similar issue recently. No, I haven't put in a ticket about it. Yeah, let me take a quick look. Sure. Look here. So yeah, I'm just going to bring this over here um, so we can look at it together. So uh, are you are you adding? Uh, you have an, a header added here. Um, you have your header key and then your variable, and then you're passing it in as a string or using a constant yeah. value here? Yes, that's exactly right. I'm wondering, uh, so when you go, uh, when you run the flow where you're, uh, uh, you know, creating this connection or gathering a response, um, are you able to observe that key being uh, passed as a header? Uh, basically, because what happens is like, you'll put in this information and then it does a ping uh, with a service and it that it's that ping that's just, uh, giving a 401. So I'm not sure if there's maybe just something is wrong with that because I haven't done anything beyond just trying to set up the service and just looking at that ping to make sure that it's establishing a valid connection. Okay. And so for your uh, service URL here, um, uh, so let's just, I'm just going to make a uh, big one. Uh,
Yeah, you can just see up above it says received a response or just as that ping result. That's where I'm getting that message. Okay, so this one right here. Um, so if we, for the service URL, um, we can just do the, uh, like the base domain and then put the relative path in another one. Are you putting the entire path here and also getting this uh, 401 response here? Yeah, I was just kind of validating it. I was just seeing if this would validate the URL and maybe that's my mistake, but like, yeah, I have a full query that would that would hit the, like it would be a fully constructed service at one point, but um, yeah, I it's like, I know normally you just set the base URL and then you build out the rest of the the URL in a, a REST service or a REST method. Okay, yeah, something I would try is, uh, you know, setting this up and then um, and then adding uh, adding your method. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're if you're using the same uh, the same token for or the same key for um, all of your endpoints, mm -hmm. uh, you should be able to specify it there. But um, what I would try to do is uh, set these up um, and uh, ignore that ping for now, and then try okay. to uh, try to run it with. Uh, using your key and uh, something you should be able to do there as well as uh, when you're debugging it, um, I believe that you should be able to uh, see that key. Um, if not, uh, you can set it up as a variable and then pass it in as a constant in your flow just right. to ensure that it's being passed in appropriately. Okay, yeah, I can give that a whirl. And yeah, if, um, if you're still getting a 401 on that um, and there's no way around it, uh, definitely uh, reach out to us on support and uh, we'll be happy to get on a further call and help you out. Sure, sounds like a good plan. All right, great. Um, okay. I, I see there was a question in the chat here as well. Um, what level of, what access level does decisions licensing server has when we set up self-licensing settings? Um, so I'm not entirely sure what uh, you mean by that. Uh, so is the question here, um, when you're setting up the self-licensing, you put in the licensing uh, variables okay. here under settings, or if uh, you're using containers with uh, environment variables. Um, are you asking about what type of licenses you can request or? Yeah, I'm not sure how to um, allow people to talk on here. Sorry, this is my first time using um, the webinar feature for Zoom. But yeah, whoever uh, whoever asked this question, uh, feel, if you're able to, feel free to speak up um, and. Uh, and if you if you can clarify a little bit on this, I'd be happy to get an answer for you. Um, so are you asking about um, if there are any additional permissions that are required? Um, so one of them in particular is that uh, you would need, uh, wherever Decisions is hosted, this would need to be allowed to uh, create an outbound uh, uh, request to um, our support.decisions.com. Um, if that's what you're referring to as permissions, uh, there should be um, no additional permissions within the portal. All right, so uh, main concern is that somebody can abuse this and take over the app server. 
um, abuse the uh, abuse the licensing um, as far as uh, going into the licensing settings and changing them. So the way the way this uh, licensing works is um, uh, it sends a request out to our uh, core platform. Um, it ensures that the uh, oh the connection. Um, so it's it it's only going to be an outbound connection. So if you have um, if you have this environment um, completely blocked off from the World Wide Web, um, you know obviously adding an additional uh, firewall permission. Um, you know that does open it up to more risk, um, but it is. Um, it should just be an outbound connection to support.decisions.com. So there, uh, there shouldn't be any inbound connections needed here. So something you can do, uh, so are you, are you using um, uh, Windows VM hosting? So uh, what's happening there is it's uh, sending a request to our platform and getting a response. So you would just need that outbound connection there. And, and it's receiving a uh, payload as a response that will take care of the licensing. Uh, so it should. Um, uh, the question was, isn't response an inbound connection? Um, it shouldn't necessarily be. Uh, so it works similarly to uh, if you're on your computer and you make a uh, make a request to a website. Um, you're not get, that website is not going to have that inbound connection um, available to connect to your computer. Um, whereas you have that outbound connection enabled on your PC, and so that way you can send a request and get a response from a website. Um, are you using um, are you using Windows VM hosting? Uh, yeah, you you shouldn't need that. Um, with the uh, you shouldn't need a two way connection. I don't I don't believe. Um, but I can definitely confirm this.
Hey, Eric, uh, happy, happy to hear that that worked. Um, and so for uh, the anonymous attendee, um, are you are you using uh, Docker hosting here? There's a great point in. Yeah, yeah, that's essentially what happens. Um, so uh, a post request is sent out with the with the licensing information that you placed in your in your environment variables and. And it should, and uh, what our internal system does is it runs through those, uh, validates them against your customer account, and then it's going to send the associated license key back. That's going to be database stored. Service. And yeah, I just got additional confirmation as well. You should only need an outbound rule to communicate with our, that's allowed to send requests to our platform. So um, another option that I wanted to bring up as well, uh, since you said you are hosting in Docker, um, something we can provide here too, if you're concerned about um, opening up uh, any firewall rules is we can also pr uh, provision a license key that you can put directly in your um, in your uh, environment file or uh, or YAML that you're using to create your containers. So that's also an option if you just want to not make any firewall modifications there, um, we can provide a license key and then self-licensing is not required.
so the next question was, uh, are all subflows running as system by default? Um, I am not entirely sure about that, actually. I can, I can double check. Um, so the next question was, uh, can someone bypass login if they have a name session ID that has permissions to edit the flow? I wouldn't think so. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, but uh, uh, just to be safe, I wouldn't give uh, a name session permissions to edit a flow. Um, and this is uh, the uh, environment uh, for the is send logs to AWS only available in Docker. Um, uh, as far as I know, uh, it's it's just going to be in our containers. Um, we are looking at uh, confirming whether or not these uh, variables will work uh, if you add them to a your settings XML as well. Um, this question also came up for the uh, Azure uh, Analytics um, for. Uh, somebody else who's hosting in a Windows VM. Um, so are you using uh, ECS?
Okay, so you're doing, uh, yeah, I, I would I would think that it would be on uh, ECS since uh, ECS uses Docker um, and allows you to have multiple containers in there. Yeah, and so you, you should be able to use uh, the AWS uh, logging variables if you uh, want all of your logs to propagate to uh, the AWS logging. Um, also for like our startup logs and um, all of that as well, those will be uh, automatically tracked to uh, to the CloudWatch. If you go, um, you would need to go into your uh, um, ECS cluster in the uh, Azure, or not Azure, uh, AWS uh, management console. Um, but uh, since you don't have access, you uh, it might be beneficial to um, to set up that uh, the variables to send um, your logging to AWS. Also, something you can do here, um, we do also uh, have the ability to store logs in. Uh, if you have, if you set up like a shared uh, EFS file store. Um, I am not entirely sure about that. I think, uh, let me take a look at these variables really quickly um, for the question, can I send logs to CloudWatch if I host on Windows? Um, so I know that AWS provides the uh, on-prem uh, support for some of these, some of these logging functionalities. Um, but bear with me just a moment while I confirm what these two variables are that are provided. Yeah, so it looks like the only thing that we're providing here with the decisions log AWS is just going to be uh, decisions log AWS region. Um, up to the up on the so uh, likely, unless uh, there is are some other third party utilities uh, yeah. set up on your Windows server, um, this isn't going to be possible. Um, were there any other questions here? And if you uh, if you think of anything down the line, uh, you know, feel, uh, especially these quick ones like this. Uh, let's see. If I host on EC2, that's when I am on decisions running. Will it go down the AWS crits chain? Got EC2 permissions. I am not. I am not sure about this one, um, but this is definitely a question that uh, I could find out. Um, would you be willing to share your uh, email um, uh, in a private chat or however you feel comfortable, and um, I can put in a support ticket on your behalf for this one?
Um, yeah, were there any other questions? Um, uh, if you share your email with me, um, I'm happy to put in a support ticket so we can get an answer for you on this last question. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I think we are good to wrap it up. Thanks for coming, everybody. Oh, so if we have one more last question. Andrew, are you talking? I can't quite hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Um, I'm not sure about uh, this last question. I know we do use ASPOS for uh, some of our um, uh, PDF generation, um, but this is another one that uh, can be checked on. Database. And yeah, if you, um, I, uh, we have a record of these questions as well. Uh, if you'd like to share your email with me, um, I, once again, I can submit a support ticket that, uh, that we can get answers to these questions for you. all right um if if that's all uh thank you everybody for joining today and um and yeah once again uh, if you have any uh, outstanding questions uh please uh, submit a support ticket and we'll be happy to get these answers for you thanks so much andrew i hope everybody has a great rest of your day people actually know right. bye everybody <laughs>